we go. Hey there. Hey, it's you guys again. Where's your cultured friend? She... Uh, she's feeling a little unwell. I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Huh? What brought this about? I hurried back from the forest yesterday, and I'm selling protos here today. I haven't felt anything strange. Mm, um, to put it another way, if you really, really think about it, was yesterday truly yesterday? Did you actually come back from the forest yesterday? What kind of philosophical nonsense is this? Are you two daydreaming? Didn't you know that no one dreams in Sumeru? Go somewhere else if you want to find someone to daydream with. <laughs> uh, he actually has a point. Is this a dream? Is everyone dreaming? Hmm, true. It's so weird that people here don't dream. Why is that? Anyway, if this all really were just a dream, we would have woken up a long time ago. Let's keep asking around. Oh, it's you two. Was my divination so accurate that you felt compelled to compliment me in person? Ooh, I knew it! I told you, the god's divination is highly accurate. You just hadn't fully understood its significance yet. <laughs> You're really excited about this, huh? That's exactly why we came back. Help us better understand it. Uh, help you better understand it? Well, that isn't exactly what I excel at. So, you're admitting that you don't have a clue? Anyway, what kind of situation did you get into? Huh? Uh, hold on a second. I thought you guys just lost your wallet or, or fell for a scam. What you just said... Are you serious? Does that kind of thing actually happen in real life? Paimon knew you weren't going to believe it. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. I believe you. Recall the interpretation of your divination. The moon, illusions, and lies. It really felt like an omen. When you say it like that, the divination does sound like it's related to what's going on. Can you read any more into it? I believe that the Archon's revelations are never more than vague hints. Anything more specific is beyond the reach of mere mortals. The book only says, If you trust your instincts and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. So that's how it is. Looks like fortune-telling is just fortune-telling. It's no good for practical problems. We haven't made any progress. Who else can we talk to? Hmm, Paima remembers that we tried talking to her a couple of times, but she always thinks we're playing pranks on her. You think she'll brush us off again? Yeah, if we tap into Dia's strong sense of responsibility as a mercenary, then she'll definitely take us seriously. Hmm, at this time of day, Dia's probably just finished beating up those kidnappers. Let's go find her! Adventure time! I'm fine, my lady. It's just a scratch. Perfect timing! Both of you are here! Paimon, Traveler, you came at just the right time. Listen, there was a dangerous ga- Huh? You saw? Then why didn't you jump in earlier? If someone was protecting Miss Dunier's odd, I could've went all out. <sighs> anyway, can you do something for me? You want the Traveler to take Dunyar's on somewhere to rest up while you check to see if there's still any kidnappers around. Did Paimon get that right? How did...
did you know what I was going to say? We need to say something convincing. My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is going on? The moon, illusions, and lies. Dia sold her greatsword to raise additional funds, and then she was injured because she wasn't used to her new weapon. Tell her, Traveler! Uh, I didn't tell anyone about that. Including Miss Dunyarzad. You couldn't have known. And just now, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. What's going on? Alright, so this is the situation. <laughs> it's kinda hard to believe what you just told me. First, let me make something clear. Most of us desert dwellers might not be the scholarly type, but we do have basic common sense. She's quieter than usual. Uninterested in anything, and really gloomy. Yeah, she isn't the same as before, but her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Huh? At first? I don't quite understand what you're all talking about. I'll go rest on the bench over there. My lady, are you angry? All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt since you knew about my greatsword. Let's make this a quick trip. Miss Dunyarzad isn't completely safe here. Off we go! Adventure time! I told you that it won't help to bring anyone here. We just wanted her to see the real Dunyarzad's condition. The real Dunyarzad? Uh, where and who are you talking to? Huh? Uh, I told you that you two are special. Other people can't see me or Miss Dunyarzad here. Hold on. Over there. Is that? Wow. How perceptive. Does she have invisible antennae? Miss Dunyarzad, she's... she's lying down here, isn't she? How's she doing? Her condition's really bad, and she's basically in a coma. How did you know she was here? I... can sense her aura. I... <clears throat> There are also lingering feelings of something like regret or disappointment. What happened? Do you believe us now? The Subzero's festival has been repeating itself. So, you think the sages are behind this? Yeah, they've always been against us. Wouldn't surprise me if they're using the Akasha to intentionally repeat the Subzero's festival as a sick joke. Hmm. You have a point. Aside from the Dendro Archon, the Academia Sages are the only ones in Sumeru who could pull off something like this. Maybe there's more to the Akasha than we know. Right! Didn't you awaken our memories using something that looked like a knowledge capsule? That means you must know something about the Akasha! The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. 
A Gnosis could do that? No wonder the Akasha is so magical. It's being powered by the Gnosis of Sumeru's Archon. So, uh, this Nahida you mentioned, what did she say? She said, and Paimon quotes, the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. Compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and grants knowledge to the people? Hmm, wait. I get the grants knowledge part. That's what people have always used the Akasha for, but compiling the entire populace's wisdom? How does that work? Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge into the Akasha? Oh yeah, that sounds about right. What do you think? Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. That doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been getting stronger and stronger. That doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been getting stronger and stronger. What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been getting stronger and stronger. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. That doesn't sound right. I need to care. My mind feels exhausted. You mean the Akasha is causing our mental fatigue? Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. When the Desert Dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, knowledge always comes at a price. Compiling the entire country's knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so who's to say that it can't also poke around in there? We don't know any specifics. What's the point of doing something like that? Just think about it. If you could combine the knowledge of every single person in Sumeru, then you can basically turn Sumeru City into a single massive brain. This hive mind could make breakthroughs and problems that even the smartest geniuses can't crack. An excellent deduction. And the analogy comparing Sumeru City to a massive brain? <sighs> I love it. In that case, we should take off our Akasha terminals right away. Maybe that'll solve this problem. Yeah, I was only wearing this for show in the first place. Didn't expect the sages to cook up such a conspiracy. <sighs> Mark my words, when this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. How does everyone feel? Huh? What is it? Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about! It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha terminal! The sound of a beep? Could it be a prompt tone for when the Akasha is operating? That's probably an important clue. We weren't using our terminals, but we heard a beep anyway. Traveler, did you hear that? I heard it too. Our ears aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but it sounded like it was coming from inside my head. We took off our Akasha terminals.
Faye's runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But we cannot lose all of our progress. Remembers everything. <laughs> Good. You adapted quickly this time. We definitely took off our Akasha terminals last night, but we still heard that beep. Why is that? <sighs> but now we can at least confirm one thing: the Akasha definitely has something to do with whatever's trapping us in this cycle. Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Why would the Akasha go this far if all it wants is everybody's wisdom? It's extremely difficult for lab rats in an experiment to understand why they're being treated the way they are. If we're lab rats, then what are you? Nahida, you've never told us anything about yourself. Hmm... I guess... I'm the moon. The moon? Wasn't that the result of our divination? Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth. So you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. <sighs> okay then. Dia helped us a lot yesterday, so let's go find her. If Paimon's reading the time correctly, those kidnappers should be showing up soon. There you are. I've already taken care of those kidnappers. My lady, did you get hurt? What? Dia? What's wrong? Why are you both gawking at me like that? You... you didn't get hurt this time! Huh? What do you mean, this time? Why are you so surprised that I managed to get out unscathed? Those kids were amateurs. Did you know about my great sword? I haven't told anyone about it. Please, don't tell Miss Dunyarzad. So Dia's lost her memories after all. Anything strange? You already know that I got a new great sword. Hmm, if I had to say something, it's weird how such a new weapon could feel so familiar. It's as if I've already used it to fight a countless number of battles. You're saying that, although you don't remember using it, your body feels like it does? That's right. Both mercenaries and warriors heavily rely on muscle memory. Only knowing the theory of battle won't get you anywhere. Traveler, what do you think? Yeah! Paimon's feeling really hopeful! Oh, you're right! Earlier in the Samsara, something like this would have never happened! I have no clue what you two are talking about, but it's still dangerous here, so... So you want us to take Dunyarzad somewhere else to rest while you check if there are still more kidnappers around, right? How did you know what I was gonna say? Can you read minds? Get it. Go and do your thing. Whew. It's finally night time. Aside from Dia not getting injured, everything seems to have stayed the same. Hmm. Listen, Nahida, we found out that Dia got out just fine today, even though she got injured every other time she fought the kidnappers. 
Do you think the samsara has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? Really? Good job on all that progress. Get some good sleep tonight. Hey! What kind of an answer is that? Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless sub -Zero's festival. Okay, okay, no more! Paimon's brain is already shut down! <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. Uh, huh? Hold on, what did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Huh? People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. That's why I suggested you could try that. Is that so strange? Uh, it's so strange and so against common sense that... Paimon's at a loss for words! You were sounding kind of smart just a minute ago! Yeah, even though it's happy and lively at the Sub-Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. Oh, let's go back to our room. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. We're still in the same day! Nahida, you already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Samsara? Why didn't you tell us?! <laughs> Would there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often, and I thought it might help you clear your minds. I'm that the Duke Duke did that! Oh, whatever. Guess you were looking out for us after all. <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. Taking things a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Nahira's talking about confusing stuff again. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. So, Traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? Huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? Oh, yeah! You're right! Gosh, how did we not notice that? In a simple time loop, people's physical condition should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It... That doesn't sound right. I need... Okay, Nahida said... Okay, Nahida said... We've already experienced the sub zero That doesn't sound right. Mercenary... <laughs> if all our memories of a... But 
Muscle memory can't be erased. That's why Dia has been getting better at using her great sword. Now everything makes sense. Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. To put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all! Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find our latest clue after all. Let's go! Took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today. Get hurt? Why would I? Don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new great sword. Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands and it... wait a second! How did you know I got a new great sword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. The situation to her today. Paimon's gotten a little sick of doing it. Oh, that works. What happened to you guys while I was gone? Did you get brainwashed by some cult? Um, don't think too hard about it. Just take what we're saying at face value. All right then, let me get this straight. You're telling me that my body's already gotten used to this great sword, but my brain just doesn't remember it? Yes, your memory's being erased every day. And I'd have to disagree. That's impossible. Oh? Why do you think that? If we've actually been reliving the Subzerus festival day after day, then what happened to the things we used, the money we spent, the food we ate? Common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself a long time ago. There's no way I wouldn't have noticed that. Right! They could use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything! It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. You have proof? Where? You two are surprisingly serious about this nonsensical discussion. Fine, I'll play along for a little longer. Come with me, Miss Dunyarzad. Please come along as well. I still can't guarantee that this area is safe. Hyman can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad. This is it. Huh? This is the wooden training dummy. What about it? See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? That's true, but what if they did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force, angle, and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy, as well as my state of mind as I made each strike. It's just as they say, each swordsman has their own unique style, and even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. 
It would be impossible to copy these marks. Is it really impossible? <gasps> what if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. Whew, hope that cleared things up for you. Hey, is this that new brain exercise game that's been super popular with the scholars lately? It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Nilu's stage. See you later. Well, back to square one. Is our memory deletion theory also wrong? <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. Yep, that's true. So, can we think of any new ideas right now? Strange? Paimon feels like everything's been strange lately. Huh? Leaving the city? You're right! It's really strange how we never thought of such a simple solution! Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city. Paimon can't believe it! Did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just too tired? How about we go back and ask Nahida? Maybe we've forgotten something about leaving the city. Adventure time! early today. Did you find something new? Sort of. We're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop. And we also aren't in the real world. But at the same time, we have a new question. Hmm, leaving the city. As far as I remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before. We did? We don't remember anything. What happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still, neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Yep, something here is definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. Our memories are back! Uh, about that. Well, where should Paimon begin? Traveler, aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another message for you. Listen to it and you'll understand. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. Traveler, you should be missing two days' worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. It's time to carry out our plan from yesterday! Okay, let's go! Why can't we leave the city? What is the Academia up to now? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. Just wait until tomorrow. 
I have a real emergency. My goods have already arrived at Port Ormos. If I don't hurry, they'll be stolen. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But, but it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> It looks like the Academia already announced the lockdown for Sumeru City today. How completely unsurprising. Let's go and question them. Hello, sir. Why can't we leave the city today? Here we go again. Don't ask me. I don't know either. We just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. <laughs> Angering me won't get you anywhere. If I had that kind of insider info, I would have left this stupid post long ago. It looks like he really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. Why don't we climb over the walls? Those guards can't be everywhere at once. This is a good spot, and the guard hasn't noticed us at all. Let's hurry! Huh? Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? B but what if things get really weird out there and you get into some trouble? Then Paimon won't be able to help you. Oh, Paimon knows that Paimon can't do much, but we've always been together, haven't we? Okay, Paimon will wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. And please, be careful. different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... disappeared in an instant. No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention! What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside! Something like... a message? But how can we send it back? D uh, don't look at me like that. Uh, I'm... I'm not used to being stared at. Uh, well... Uh, okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep! Now we're talking!
I'm done. Here you go. What? Isn't this just an Akasha terminal? I need some little changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand! Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll never know until we try! At least we're taking the initiative now! Let's go then! Let's excuse those sages! Ugh. All right. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But... Paimon still isn't happy about it. Okay, see you tomorrow, Traveler! That covers everything that's happened so far! <sighs> yes, although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together! I can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzerus Festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. Spaces have been disappearing one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now! Those spaces are actually... because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? That doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. Oh, so that's what it is! After the sound of the beep, the final space, the Subzeru's festival, also disappears, and we're taken to the next day! Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them! Do 
lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon's head is spinning. Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away! Awesome! What is it? Paima wants to know! Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth. Are you ready to take your Subzeris exam and graduate from the festival? <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? Okay. Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It com- The moon, illusions, and lie. That doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. Hmm. I can't seem to cohesively piece everything together. Hmm. Hmm. All the bizarre spaces I saw out. And those spaces remind me of... Dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except these have no sign of human presence. We've already experienced... That doesn't sound... Doesn't sound right. That doesn't. That doesn't. We've all. We are all. People in Sumeru. 
Meru think they don't dream, but the truth is the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now. Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. It is the manifestation of the god of... Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But... Is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions, and the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the samsara? We've already experienced the Subzerus festival many times, and the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. That doesn't sound right. My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is going on? The beep is a prompt tone for Akasha operations. We still hear it every night. The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? That doesn't sound right. I need... Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. But it's... Those dreamscapes kept vanishing. Hmm. 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 Correct. The Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha, and so it continues. So, this is like a dream factory, and the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay, so that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I? Now that I think about it, wasn't illusions hinting at the sage's deception of Sumeru's people? That doesn't sound right. I... They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... <laughs> so you noticed. Uh, I thought that one would be the hardest question.
question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you, is all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. Deceiving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival, Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? <sighs> Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time today! I'll tell you how to break free of the Samsara tomorrow. See you then. Good morning, Nahida! Uh, wait. Now that Paimon remembers everything, should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> What's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way! Are... are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. I can't believe it! Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just, what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarzad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarzad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarzad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Puppets are stiff and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. And you know, speaking of which, the old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her after all! Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? A 
Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack! And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, Everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me, uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the Traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Hurry and go! Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this, Samsara, need to end. Hmm. Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. Yeah, saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering, do you think the Sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Huh. That's true. Plus, the sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris the Knight of Flowers is a symbol of the whole Subzerus festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we?